are. Come out, come out wherever you are. How are you, weather man? I'm fantastic. Hey, do we have? Ooh, ooh look at that set. How's the how's the look, girl? Good today. Make sure you got. Hey, my make daughter, sure you my got daughter did the set to today. today. <laughs> Oh, Patrick Join Jones is our first. Hey, Patrick. Hey, buddy. Patrick Jones, how are you doing? Man, I can't see myself, folks. I can't start until you see me. So you're on there. Roy Frazier says, what's up, dudes? Roy Frazier. We're about to go live. We're a little live. I, for some reason, I, I, I can't. I never connect to the internet. You're not on the internet. Wow, well, uh, what is that word? Tony Shelton has just joined us. Hey, Tony Shelton, thank you for joining, friend. Hey, we may have delay. Tommy's not on yet, and so bear with <laughs> this us. This makes so. me so angry. Why? How in the hell do we not have Wi-Fi right here? I do have Wi-Fi. Well, hey, uh, Thomas joined us from Instagram. Yep. Hey, guys, I can see all of you. I'm glad you're here. What is this? <laughs> What's going on here? We got to relate to our IT department real quick. We'll be back moment. Hey, we're about, hey we ain't, we ain't going to stop. There. Oh, there's a temporary. Hey, we got a temporary fix. Stevie Z's in the house. Thank you, my man. Hey, come up here and get with us, everybody. We're about to we're about to get started. Are you on there? What is that? That's our applause leader. This applause leader. Hey, put right that here. down. Come up here and sit by me. I don't know, say? Kathleen. Don't worry about like trying to get him. Chair. Don't worry about like, squeezing Stevie in. But I want him to come up here by me. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna, we just don't today. No, I want to be able to talk. Walk in front of the camera, it's okay. All right, glad you're here. No, 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 just sit right there. Bro. <laughs> we all won't fit. So. All right. So we got our man, Stevie Z, up in the studio. Don't worry about it, Justin. Oh, there you go. Just Hi, one time. Right. <laughs> okay. So, hey, every Wednesday, Real Estate 101 comes to you live. No matter where I'm at, the weatherman, I fill in, it don't matter. Sometimes we'll do the show in other parts of the country. I've done it in Vegas. I've done it in Florida. Might be Paris. I'll do it wherever. So, hey, what we want to become known as Murfreesboro's number one digital source for real estate content. Boom! Is that what it is? That right. And how many people do we want to know who you we are? We want 131,000 people to know us. So here's how you can help us. You can't come all, and you can't. Everybody's not looking to buy a house right now, but you can help me spread this word. I'm really needing you to help share this stream onto your onto your Facebook. And if they so, share, and if you share this here stream, you go into a raffle. One person gets an Alley on Main gift card, and if you're responsible, I will throw in my slingshot for a one day rental. And don't forget the Stephen, aka Weatherman Chicken Parmesan. Is on the menu. All right, so hey, share the stream, please. Share the stream, please. I need you to share the stream. We want to reach as many people as we possibly can. Well, that being said, here's the point of the show where the weatherman will introduce who's our sponsor. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to let you. We're going to let's. We're going to pick one today, and we're going to kind of talk about that sponsor. And My mama's uh, up. Hey, mama. And so I, I want to pick Roy Fraser this week. So let me tell you why mm -hmm. I want to talk just a second about Roy Fraser. Roy Fraser is a is a great friend. He's a wonderful real estate agent. Most of all, he takes care of all of our clients' needs. He's he's very personal. We never have to worry about Roy when we need him. He's also our breakfast buddy. He's AKA the trout magnet. But most of all, he's with Farm Bureau Insurance. And guys, if you need any kind of insurance needs, please call our friend Roy Fraser at Farm Bureau because we like to invest. Who invest in us? That's exactly what we're going to do. I see my guy, my favorite banker, Ronnie Martin, has joined, and this is something me and him have talked about in the past. Our topic for today. So, what are you doing, Stevie Z? Come on, man. Share the stream. Share the stream, buddy. <laughs> Kenneth Adams, share the stream, card. buddy. Hey, old school, card. buddy. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you share the stream one more time, you share the stream. You go into a raffle. You can win a $25 gift card with an alley, and I'm even gonna let the responsible people that I can trust take the slingshot with them for a day. So you may have to sign a piece of paper. Probably, hey, my guy Roy Fraser has told me. Uh, I was reading Ronnie's. I'm sorry. He was telling me that I needed to. Uh, make sure they're signing things. So hey, Ronnie Martin's already starting us out. I need my own representation, please. 
One time Ronnie posed this. He believes that you cannot represent both parties. I agree totally with Ronnie. Well, okay, well, I'm going to challenge that assumption today. So let's break down the role of each agent, okay? There is a listing agent. A listing agent goes out and he finds a, a seller. Mr. Stevie Zavisa is a seller. He wants to sell his house. Me and him, have, we have come into <coughs> negotiations. He has uh, asked me, what can I do to solve his problem? Then he asked me, what am I going to charge him? And I'm going to say between 6 and 10% you pick. He's probably going to go on the lower end of that. So he is looking, since he is paying for the transaction, so, he's funding it 6 to 10%. Maybe we can get 10%. We like already. to call it the transformation. The transformation. Okay, so Stevie now expects me to be looking out for your best interest. Correct. So in the old days, the seller always... Was you always understood he's representing the seller. Back then, it was a lot more dual agencies where you yes. come in. So then you've got a buyer's agent. Wait a man. I am somebody where I called off of that listing, and now I'm calling my agent to get me in that house. This agent is to represent my best interest. Right. To free. Get free. Because you've already paid for this guy to have a represent representation. Is that clear? Is everybody following mm -hmm. me? So the listing agent is responsible for paying the selling agent's commission because the money is paid to John Jones Real Estate. John Jones Real Estate would pay out the other side. Right. So we're clear on that, okay? Clear. Clear. So if the listing agent is expecting me to represent his best interest first and foremost, how could I represent somebody else's best interest? If I'm trying to get his, is there such thing as a win-win? Can you win-win? You can, but I'm, I don't want to steal your thunder, but it's uh, not very No, easy. no, this is all your opinion. So sellers want the most money. You probably want the most money, but an agent like me, I want to bring in most money I can get you, but I also want to talk about the highest probability of it closing. That's a, a variable that a lot of the public's not thinking about. Right. You could bring an agent, think about this, weatherman could have a buyer, okay? Mm -hmm. Bring it to us. He doesn't even know that buyer. He, he knows a little bit about him, but that, that guy says, hey, I want to buy that house. It's listed. At, let's say this, let's make it interesting. Let's say this house is listed at 179.9, mm. okay? Because I believe one of the things that really can influence representation is price points. Yeah. So yeah. let's say I've got this house for 179 in Murfreesboro, Tennessee right now. People are having sex longer than it takes to sell a house. Is that illegal to say? It's too late now. Okay, okay. we can't do anything about it. But I mean, that's really like five minutes is about as long as yeah. it takes to sell a 179.9 house. So weatherman, you've got a guy, we're at 179, we've got multiple offers. Your guy wants this house. Right. What are you going to help? How are you going to help him get this house? There's going to be a couple of things he's going to have to do to make his offer the most aggressive and then to make our offer go above the other known agents that are bringing the offer, the unrepresented people that probably want to buy it. So our offer has to be pretty freaking good. Okay, so are you representing your client if you're going to have to get him to pay more than $179.9? i am representing my client if we're going to have to pay over 179 because that's what it's going to take to win this. On a multiple offer, if it's not multiple offer, it's a little bit different, but on a multiple offer, yes, in order to represent my client, I have to tell the truth. Okay. Could you see under any circumstances, hey, where's the likes? I need some likes and I need some shares. Under any circumstances, Ronnie Martin, weatherman, could you see me as his representative also being able to get the best deal for a buyer? Yes. In this market. Oh, so now we got a contradiction of what you said. I got no. it on tape. Roll the tape, Kathleen. Here, you here, said. Here's the problem. <laughs> yeah, you can get the deal, but that's the easy part. You still got all the headache of the transaction that you got to deal with both sides of the party. You got appraisal issues. You got home inspection issues. There's so many different things that you. Yes, anybody can go out here. My my 18 year old daughter can represent a 179 buyer without a real estate license and a seller to get the deal done. But she can't handle the emotional stress of what comes along after you sign the dotted line. Okay, so Ronnie Martin, Mama, thank you for sharing, I love you. 
Ronnie Martin says this feels like facilitation. He does not uh, believe it. So, or believe that you can represent both sides. So we're at 179.9. Stevie, how, how much as a seller, how much would you be willing to forego to make sure I'm 100% certain this deal is going to close? If you had an offer at 180, where we knew that, you wanted 179.9. I've shown you, look, we will not do more than this once the appraiser gets a hold of it. This is, we're pushing the most we're going to be able to get. Mm -hmm. Then somebody comes in there and they offer you 186. Or 190. Or 190. Ooh, that sounds even better. It does sound, it does sound better. Well, what if that dun, person, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what if that person that's offering 190 has got this appraisal contingency in there? They're dealing with a loan person that we don't know who they are. And I'm like, Stevie. That offer looks better, but it's the devil. Yeah. It's the devil. Hey, she, I mean, it's. How many times do we take the <laughs> devil up? <laughs> okay, so here's what's going to, here's what could happen. Robert Sislow, thank you, buddy. Share the stream, Robert Sislow. We can't do it without you. So I'm, I'm saying, look, this offer's 180. I know the other, hey, the other agent's making it. What else could you want for another agent to have? Uh, Ronnie Martin, I'm getting to you. I see that question is popped up, and I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help you through this. I'm saying, hey, I've got control of this file. If I've got control of this file, I believe the probability of it closing goes to the top. I know this guy. I've got him pre-approved with Belinda Arinder, the Meerkat. And I'm saying, look, Ronnie, here's to you, buddy. I'm gonna tell my buyer, look, let's all from 180. But we can't, we're only going to do an as-is home inspection. If you don't do this, as-is means we'll get an inspector as long as there's nothing really, really wrong with it. We're going to buy it. If he's like, well, no, I don't want to do that, I'm going to say, well, what can you do to make your offer stand out? You can offer more money. So I'm going to put it back in his terms. Ronnie, I'm going to ask him, or is he certain? Now, let me ask you a question. In your ethical hat on mm -hmm. how ethical is it because most time we see a double-sided commission yep. and we realistically do things that probably aren't in the buyer's best interest because we have ties to both of them so and when I say that I mean what you're telling that buyer is exactly true yep. in this market but him knowing you work in both sides he's gonna go into this wanting it and then he's gonna have buyers remorse and then you're gonna see that side of it that you probably don't want to see. Does that happen in these scenarios? It could, but I think there's a much greater scenario of it happening where there's another agent involved that I don't know and they don't know their client. Right. I believe I'm looking for probability. I'm looking, hey Brittany Renee, I love you. I'm looking for the highest probability to get you the most money that I can get you and the highest probability of it closing. That's what I'm trying to get you. Now, you might say, well, I want to get a little bit more money. Well, maybe we can risk getting you more money, but the more money this person is going to risk, the more contingencies they're going to have in there. Mm -hmm. So what's your best, what's your best, uh, all right, get that right. Get that right. Can't Darryl. get right. Can't I, get I would right. like a surety. I want the most assurity that the deal is going to get done because I want to sell the house. Okay, well, now I'm in the middle here. That's why okay. I got you right you want there. You surety? So, well, okay, you, Stevie, if you want assurance, what if I can get $5,000 non-refundable on this deal? That's not assurance. But it can't go above 180. I know he's going to buy it. We're only going to do an as-is home inspection. But what does that mean? What is an as-is home inspection? Mean? That means we'll do an inspection as long as we're satisfied with the condition, we'll take it like it is. So now, as Mr. Seller, as long as it's satisfying, which means you lose the percentage of a surety. There's no such thing as a 100% way. There's Unless no way. That's a $179,000 non-refundable earnest money that he owes in escrow. And he's putting up all the money right yeah. now. That'd yeah. be the best way yeah. to do it. Yeah. So are you willing to maybe potentially forgo making the extra three or $4,000 if I can say this is our guy right here? He's going to do an as-is home inspection. We don't have to worry about the appraisal. Mm -hmm. The only thing we got to do is get through uh, underwriting, and it's done. You're sitting there in your mind. You're thinking, sellers are thinking, how can I get the most money? Buyers are thinking, how can I save the most money? Yeah. 
agents are looking at the highest probability getting you what you want. Yeah, I, and the, the commission check comes in 30 days. That's the problem. So what, but what I'm getting at is price point really matters. Yes. If you can get in with somebody right now, if somebody brought me a deal right now, Evergreen Farms for $125,000, you could represent me, you could represent the seller, I don't care. It's all about the deal. The price point determines that. At 179, the seller can now. If we go to 300,000, then we're balancing out a little yeah. bit. If you've got an agent that uh, that can probably represent you more, but there's so much power with a uh, with a seller right now under 200,000 dollars. Ronnie Mars said, "Cash deal, no contingencies. That's about the most security because they, the uh, the finance contingency goes away because you wait in. And what a finance contingency is is you can still get your earnest money back." If the bank writes you a letter saying you can't get financially approved, so if you waive the financial contingency and you can't buy the house, you lose your earnest money when you waive the financial contingency. So I'm going to try to put this in banker terms for Ronnie. Ronnie, do you think it would be a better deal if I can go to my banker, Ronnie Martin, who's got decision authority right there? He can make a decision, or am I better off to go to somebody because? Maybe they can do it a little bit cheaper. They're saying they can get it done, but then it's got to be approved by, by somebody else. Yeah. So what I'm saying in this particular situation, I feel like going with somebody that's in complete control of the deal is in that, in that person, in that, that um, transactions. Well, I think it's in their best. You should feel good this is my client, even though this guy right here, he's not going to offer you as much as somebody else, but I'm telling you, Hey, we're at 179. I don't even know if this thing's going to appraise for 182. So we may be right back at this point. Number uh, two. Well, let's go to a bump in the road because that was uh, that was great. So let's say this. Let's say you represent Stevie, and you and you finagle this thing, and we know what it's called. And for all y'all out there, it used to be called dual agency because facilitator is not really this. So it's actually your dual agency. You represent both parties. The biggest problem is most of the time there's another house that's going to be involved in this. So most of the time when this guy's selling, you're going to turn around and represent him on the purchase of another house. And so now it's a three transaction deal with one agent and two buyers and one seller. So that's when it could get Well, if, if I was in that situation and we had a house at 179, in good conscience I could not tell my client to take a contingency. No, I'm not talking about contingency. I'm talking about if he sells something mm -hmm. and he knows it's pretty much done, he's probably wanting you to go find him something else it's in this price point you see. Very rarely is somebody just selling that sales point and they're done. They're moving out of state. Most time they're going up to the next house. They're building another house. So now you have another piece of that puzzle. Where's he going next? And you represent him. So now in the seller's mind, he's thinking, man, I'm paying this guy, he's buying a house, he's selling my house, and he's representing the buyer, man, he's getting 9% off of me. And then them wheels start turning. And then everybody that he didn't talk to a week ago has had the chance to call him and say, hey, guy, did he give you a break? Did he cut his commission? And boom, that's when, that's when the emotional roller coaster starts. Are you going to do me like that? No, I wouldn't do you like that. You yeah. promise? Yes, you will. I promise well, hey, I've got a way to get over that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. Well, I don't sell the transaction anymore. I sell what I can do for you outside of this deal. And I'm going to say, look, Stevie, if you want my help, if you want to be able to come to me for a job, if you are going to come to me and want access to our social media platform, this is what this is what I'm looking for. If you need sponsorship for a kid, you come to me because I believe you should go with the agent that's given the most to you. Not just in the transaction, not the best service, not the best negotiator, but I believe you should go with who's giving you the most. I can't tell this guy no, because look at all the other perks I get that come along with it, that free prize. Yeah, and who you have as far as personnel, closing coordinators, all marketing, stuff, so but, much stuff that goes into those decisions. But I'm gonna say, look man, I'm making 9%, I'm gonna go, hey, yeah, it is. I'm making 9%. That, that's right. But that's probably all I'm going to make for a couple years off of you. But in the meantime, what can I do for you?
to make that money back. Let's get off of uh, the transaction here. What 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 do you do for a living, Stevie? Sell real estate, actually. Hey, well, that ain't no good. Hey, he don't know how to play. Well, yeah, okay. He's a salesman. Okay. He is a salesman. You sell insurance. I yeah, sell insurance. Now I've got to find a way. What's your biggest problem you have selling insurance? Finding people to buy. Uh -oh. Okay, uh -oh. okay, day, okay. so now I go from being a real estate agent after we close to man, now I'm an assistant for a lot for an insurance person. We like we, all those advocates. We got to find a way to get Stevie business. What is it? Hey, so if I can if I can make this money up to you, do you feel good about paying this nine yeah, percent? That's it. Are you? Do you promise you ain't gonna nickel and dime me? I don't know. I mean, if you're gonna nickel and dime me, I feel like all this this goes off the table. That girl Kathleen, that's so good at advocating for people, you lose that for free. Is this nine percent that you're gonna pay somebody at least eight percent anyway? Is it worth it? Hey, teacher, teacher. Hey, uh, let me ask you a question now. The scenario is very, very good, and I do agree that you are one of the best ones that, that does ask those questions. But realistically, let's talk about the real estate average agent. Are they thinking this deep into those situations? No, and a lot of people, unfortunately, haven't built a platform to where they can help somebody. I agree. I mean, what if, if somebody comes to me and they're comparing me to somebody that's going to discount the deal? And if they're moving out of town, I may have to look at it different. But if it's somebody that's staying right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it off of this transaction. I'm gonna show what I can do. They're gonna know what they can do, but I'm gonna show them a whole nother perspective of how I could help them. Uh, uh, and uh, one of the things that we're gonna start doing is we're hey, can I call in and ask sure a can. question? Mm -hmm. I ain't got a phone, Ronnie. Can he call in? No, no, just say, just say it now, Ronnie. I say, we're sorry. Ronnie, you asked, or what, what phone? Hey, hey we'll you call you. Fire away, we'll Ronnie. We'll call you, Ronnie Martin, if you want us to. So, number two, we're going to move along. We're taking up a lot of time right now. Hey, here. well, that, that is such a, but it's really, if, if you spend the whole time on that, it's it's so powerful because I don't think a lot of people realize the importance of the mentality of this is not just about a transaction. It's literally about I want to invest in you from here on out. And most real estate agents, and I'm I'm chief center, we, we get lost up and get the deal, move on, get the deal, move on, and we don't invest in our people like we should. Mm -hmm. Well, it's and hard whenever you don't, I mean, whenever I look at what I'm, I, I say it, it's easy to say it, but hell, I'm about to replace somebody's roof. I mean, that ain't something that I want to, hey, dial this number, 615. Hold on, do you want to get that number out of I don't care. It's, I'm gonna give it off six one five eight nine zero one 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 one. And that's the bank, by the way. Yeah, that's first thing. That's for Ronnie Martin. Let's see if he's got a question. Okay, number two, time on the market. That also matters for a seller. The longer your house sits, the less leverage you got. So if we're on the market for fifty or sixty days, and now you're you're like, I am not. I'm not going to negotiate my list price. I'm not going down on my list price. I got this guy. He's wanting to come in there and he's wanting to offer you. Let's say, let's say if it's listed at two seventy nine, he's going to offer you two sixty nine. You don't want to take it. Mm -hmm. Here, you. I get now, you now I got to work on his side to help you out because you're kind of getting in your own way. Yeah. Right now we know this. If your home is not sold in twenty days under three hundred thousand dollars. It's a pricing problem, or uh, or it's a, so. it's a inside the house problem too. It could be that the inside of the house doesn't match up Condition, to yeah. which also equals this price. Price. Yes. So now now it's going to look like you're paying me, but I'm saying, man, you got to take this guy's offer, even $10, though I'm thousand dollars cheaper. Yeah, and you're going to want to know no. Why? Hey, you're you're just trying to get his best interest. Did you try to call him. Let, I think it's, I got 890 what? 1111. Let's, let's, let's look at this. Let's say Stevie has a house out. Let's just say he's got a house in 12 corners out there. And it's a $250,000 house now. With the way the market is now, you could almost, you're smarter to list a house at 199 and get a 260 offer. Because people say this house is worth a lot more. You'd have 20 people making bids on it. And you're probably going to get what you want. Considering if you're t overpriced, he's uh, he's giving his mobile number. He's hey hey he's uh, serious. Hey, I'm calling you right now. He's <laughs> serious. Hey, hey we're hey, answer that phone right now. Man, Martin. you know how many people can see this. You're on. <laughs> man, you know is this, how many. Is this Ronnie Martin? Hello. 
Hey, we got you on speaker of Real Estate 101. We have a celebrity guest. We folks. got a celebrity guest. What's your question? Hey, okay, so here's my question. Now, you're a lot smarter than me, Ronnie. Don't embarrass me. No, this is, this is right in your wheelhouse. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Eight years. Eight seven years. Seven years. Ten years. Or twenty. Or twenty. Let's say you're representing me and I'm, I'm the buyer and you know a seller. And you know that you want to buy this house and I'm going to buy it about 15 years old. Did Kislon put you up to this? No. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yep. So I'd like you to negotiate uh, the new age vacuum, uh, or at least a credit towards a new age vacuum. Okay. And um, and I'll let you work through the issues on the seller side and why they would or would not do that if it's a working you. Okay. So hold on with me. I know you want to jump on there. I know you're you're smarter than me. I, okay. I'm gonna. I always try to find a common interest here. Ronnie is the best commercial banker in this town, okay? But I'm, uh, he's going to know a little bit about residential pricing on an interest rate. What does it mean when something's already priced in, Ronnie? Uh, it's, it's already put. So let's say if you've got a rate where you're not getting paid hardly anything off, you've adjusted it to par, whatever there's a spread, and that's all we can give you. So I'm going to tell the seller this. Look, if I've got a seller, sometimes we got to price this thing in. Say my seller doesn't have the money. He doesn't want to fix it. I'm going to have to explain to you, Ronnie, hey, we would have this listed about $6,000 more above that price. But we're, we're, we're conceding the fact that it needs a new heating and air system. We've got, we've got that priced in. Is that something that you would feel comfortable buying? Was that something you'd feel comfortable negotiating from? Is how I would put that. I would, assuming that I could see the price differentiation in the marketplace. Now, there's some things that, uh, man, I love the call-ins. I wish we could do this all the time. Now, here's how, here's how that would be hard to uh, justify. Let's say we've been on the market 30 days. We have not adjusted it and we're still saying this, then I'm going to tell my seller, look, we're too high, man. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to adjust this. Then Ronnie comes in, we adjust it, he gets it inspected. Hey, or before that, I don't feel comfortable with this. I'm going to have to, I, if, if I can't explain the value to both people, if they question me, they don't trust me, more than likely they're not going to go along with what I'm saying. Cutting, cutting your commission will never give somebody more certainty. Yeah. Does that make sense? Go ahead, Stephen. In, in, in your opinion, Ronnie, when, when most people ask that question, in their mindset are they thinking because you're getting both sides, you may have to split the bill on this and you can cover a little bit yourself? So agents out there, you've got, instead of dropping how you're getting paid your commission, find ways to increase the value. And the value doesn't necessarily have to be in the real estate transaction. What if uh, Ronnie was doing this and he wanted me to help out? And I'm like, man, I can't do that. But I'll tell you what I can do. I can double your, what you, uh, I can double this by helping you out with something you're going to make money on. How about if we do that? 
How about if we get a win? My, my commission, how about if I give you even more than what you've given me by sending you business somehow? Well, that's exactly what you do. You, you can help me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, would you agree that most people, especially, and Ronnie used the word quantify, folks, in case you didn't hear that. So in your business and being an a, a outstanding banker like you are, don't you have more respect for somebody that steps up and, and pretty much lets you know that I don't I don't reduce my commission. I, I'm a professionalist is what I do, considering somebody that'll actually give in and, and do that. Do you, do you find it easier to say, well, I appreciate that and don't bring it up again? Or do you find it that you really want to try to get the I want to answer this for Ronnie. Okay. Because Ronnie's one of the best that I've seen at articulating his value. Right. And he's not going to just say no. He will say, he will show them what you're getting. Like I tell people all the time, uh, if Ronnie's five and three quarters or six percent, to me, I don't care about that. What I care about is he has shown me a clear path. He has shown me how to make money in real estate. What's that worth? Okay. If that ain't worth uh, a quarter point, that I, I feel like that's my problem. Right. So, hey, we got to keep going. But we, hey, you're our first ever call in uh, person on Real Estate 101, Ronnie. This was the loan kind of fun. Hey, we love this. Maybe we can do it next week. <laughs> hey, I'll call you. See you, buddy. Okay. Bye. Hey, that was Ronnie Martin there, guys. The number one rated commercial banker. Hey, maybe in the, in the world. In the world. All right, uh, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this scenario with you. Right now, agents, potential buyers, sellers, how often, because of the shortage of inventory out there, are you seeing the old coming soon sign? You know that's that's very demanding right now, and everybody knows if you're in real estate, other than referrals and a sphere of influence. Your sign calls are probably one of your number one lead generators. And so that's a that's a, a big factor right now. So I've place. got a house coming soon, 179. If you were a buyer mm -hmm. and you called me up and you're like, hey, I want to get in that house. Let's, 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 let's really in that house, talk man. about where the market is. I'm a buyer. I have an agent that's shown me 44 houses. I've lost 12 of them to multiple offers. Now I'm fed up. I'm almost like a, a free agent with a buyer's rep that I'm ready to tear up. That are the phone calls that you're getting. Ooh, man, that you're making it complicated. Well, I'm going to say, hey, man, if, and this is probably illegal. Could I go to jail for this answer? This is just all opinion agents. Well, I think, I think this is what most agents are probably doing. When they've got a product for sale or a coming soon product, I think the reason why you're doing this is to to get a buyer yeah, or a few buyers. Or and I think buyers, what yeah. I think what most agents are going to do is they're going to weed out the people. Gonna, you're going to go on a list whenever, mm -hmm. hey, well, just watch the MLS if you've got an agent. Usually, now, if an yeah. agent calls me up, if an agent calls me up that I know, I like, I trust, I want to help. If Blair Braswell called me up and said, man, i got a client. They want to get in that new listing you got coming up on Southridge, 179.9. But that ain't who called you. We had a buyer call you. A buyer call, if they say I've got an agent, what No, the they, they said what I said. We've looked at 44 houses. We can't get a house. I don't care what I got to do. My, we don't have anywhere to go. I'm living with my Are you mama. committed to this agent? Are you committed to That's this That's the answer agent? I'm looking to. Are you committed? Is it up to the I'm going to be honest with you. It, it ain't. Commitment ain't, at this point has no value over the situation. Have I'm at my mama's a, house with three have kids, you signed sharing a half bath. I'm taking a shower in the sink, and I've been doing this for 45 days. I, 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 I'm smart enough to know. That What's your name again, Stephanie? My name is Stevie. Stevie. Savisa. Stevie and Savisa. I know without a doubt <laughs> that I, I know what a buyer's rep is. I'm committed to this guy. Bless his heart. He's a friend of my mama's. He just, he's new. He can't get me in the house. I, man, what do I got to do to buy this house? I don't care if I got you, but, you, somebody. You well, you're, you, it sounds like you're committed to another agent because you've signed something. I Look, you know and I know that I signed a piece of paper that everybody had to sign anyway. Well, man, before, hey, before I get you in the house without him, you're going you're gonna to have to get that null That's no problem. If I, I know the board as of about two hours from now, I'll send you a piece of paper. 
my thing is I have to be in a house. It ain't I, if I got to pay that guy a thousand bucks just because I feel bad. I'm willing to do whatever I do for my family. That's real realization of where our market is at one hundred seventy nine. But really, here's really what happens: those buyers that are dealing with the agents, they get mad. And even though it ain't the agent's fault, exactly right. They start finding reasons to. Well, man, can you believe that he went to Panama City last week? He's supposed to be he, showing me houses this weekend, and he can't. He can't do it. They play, they start justifying why they don't want to use that person. But if, hey, I think an ethical agent, most of them like us, weatherman. That's right. Like, okay. If they got an agent, I'm going to say this. You know, hey, I understand you got an agent, but there's other people that I've promised that I'm getting in there first. Right. I don't know if that's legal. I don't know. Maybe we need to verify that. But well, no, they were setting up a show and thing. So with that scenario being said, that's the dramatic part of a buyer saying that. But there's also the dramatic part of a listing agent saying, "Hey, look, I got the listing. If you ain't represented, I'll get you in first. I represent the seller. I have control." That's a realization of where we're at in this market too. Hey, and that maybe I could get with my seller and say the only people that can get in here first are represented by you, GTT. And I need you to sign that, even though it's my idea. So, so in these such way, in these certain situations right here, I believe a middleman agent can represent and get both people what they want. In this market, and everything changes. Now, whether man, that is a great point. In this market. Yeah. Now, when we become more balanced, I probably can't say some of the things that I'm saying. When it's balanced, you probably do need your own representation. And why is that? What does a balanced market bring to a, a $200,000 house that this market doesn't bring? More options. A balanced market means it's a six-month inventory out there. But what can you get when you ask? Closing, closing calls, calls. Inspections. Yeah. So, appraisals. So, like, if you go to an on-site builder, they clearly represent the they 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 represent that builder, and they're right. probably I mean that's where all their money's going to come from, and they're going to they're they're very scripted. They're very good at getting you what the company wants. Now, you could bring a pushy agent in there. Hey, I need some likes. And I need some more shares. shares. I need the shares. When is the one from Blair? So, I believe when it's a more balanced market, it's very uncomfortable. Like, if I, ask, now, I don't like, whenever I bought my house, my buddy Glenn Street helped me get it. Yeah. I mean, he's the guy. I probably would have. Uh, Let him represent you. I mean, yeah, I would have because, I mean, it's hard for me. Yeah. I, in most deals, I end up losing more money when I'm dealing directly with somebody. If yes. I'm doing a project and you ask me for something, the people pleasing part of me will give in. Mm -hmm. That's why you need negotiations. That's why you need a buffer. That's why you need an advocate. But for now, today, right now, under two hundred thousand dollars, in my opinion, a middleman can represent both people and get both people exactly what they want. You could probably find a real life unicorn or a mermaid easier. Don't share it two times. You only get credit for one. You hurt my ratings when you share it <laughs> twice. <laughs> You're disqualified. You You're disqualified, <laughs> Steve. Right, so let's, let me, since we're on this subject, can we know the market's crazy 179, you made some valid points. But truly, there's, even on our ML, in our conference bases, there's a couple types of a, of representation. Yep. That. So we have a buyer's agent. Yep. We have a selling agent. I don't think is dual agency still on there. I think it's one of them. Facilitator, dual Facil agent. Facilitator. So a facilitator, you're pretty much waving. Hey, I don't represent any. I'm just right. No. And so even on our MLS listings, you'll see a spot for facilitator. A lot of times it's a five percent, seven six percent. So in my opinion, what a facilitator is is a very neutral party, almost like an attorney. That don't even work for either one of them. That they bring this deal to you and you say, "Look, I don't know you. I don't know you. I'll get all the paperwork. You voice your complaints. I'll say them, and I'll be in the middle." But when you're a facilitator, do you believe that's what you do? No, but actually, if you look at what you're hey, supposed to do, hey, we got Lisa Progar. What are you supposed to do? As do you have a good news for us, Progar? Always. We like that. Hey, hey, we can't hey, do it without hey. Lisa. So, so no. So does a, a facilitator is still? Hey, maybe they're saying they're not doing that, but they're still influencing. And there's unrepresented. So, uh, but most of the time, 
I don't know. I never even want to be called a facilitator because, golly, it brings on all the repercussion. Now you could have two people mad at you instead of one person. If you represent one side, you can tend up and fend for them and, and have their back, and most time you can get away with a lot of stuff. When you have two people that have no investment in you whatsoever, it's not a very fun place to be. Would you agree with that? I think you were exactly correct, brother man. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to get back in there and watch your show? I, I'm not. I've been on the MLS all day. Have you been there? Really? <laughs> I've been you in there looking for stuff. Studying. All right, guys, we've been going right at 40 minutes now. We really do appreciate you. If somehow, some way, this has ended up on your stream, share it again. Share it again, your friend. Face My face goal face is face. for me to be in front of 131,000 people, and Look I cannot at your boy. do it. Swifty. I cannot. How much does a facilitator? The facilitator takes it all, man. However much he can get. Do this five percent. It's usually six to ten percent. We can let the <laughs> seller pick. But uh, the hey, one time we're going next week or the week after. We need to do this. Would would a would you accept an offer from a non-represented party, like a buyer wanting to represent themselves? I want only real, well, we don't, we don't, I won't steal your thunder. We'll wait till next week. Well, it might be the week after that. But, uh, <laughs> Sam, uh, a facilitator is doing both jobs. I don't know why you would negotiate yourself to get paid any less. The deals are a lot harder. It's much harder when you've got to negotiate both sides. It's harder when you've got to negotiate directly with a party. It's a lot easier. So is to me in this market, you shouldn't take those offers. You shouldn't you shouldn't work directly with uh, a buyer if you're the listing agent. And I think legally, I think there's some recourse that that buyer could have because you are a real estate professional and I think they could sue you. Probably yeah. Well, you may be sued anyway. I may have made that up. But no, I do that think I can. I do good. think I do think it did sound good. No, I do think I've even heard like in for sale by owner transactions. Like if you were selling your house for sale by owner, and I had weatherman come buy it, I still think I've got some liability. If you said, "Well, I didn't know that. I took advantage of you," I still think even though I'm on the opposition, there could be some legalities. Hey, the the people in the audience, Lisa Progar is saying yes. So hey. Ooh. And she is a lot smarter than she us. She knows it all. She knows <laughs> everything. All right, guys. Hey, we appreciate it. We're shutting it down. Tune in tomorrow night straight from the gut. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about something in my crazy life journey, which I wish I could have told myself years before so I could have done like a little, hey, you know, whenever you go around cities, what are those called? Like uh, 260. What takes you around Nashville? Bypass. The bypass. I wish I could have bypassed some things in my life. So, 8 o'clock, straight from the gut with me and Brittany Renee. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Hey, hey also, guys, don't forget we're still selling our shirts for Reconstruction Life. So, please, because it's such a great cause, all this goes 100% to that cause, and we would love for you to Wait a minute, I need you us. to get on the phone with your people. And sell them. Put them in the closing stipulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. All right, guys. Have a great day.